Okay, welcome to the Pattern Toolbox program and here is the first thing you should learn and get very comfortable with. It's the major scale and it's decrease. Well, the decrease mean that you give a number to each note of the scale. We have total of seven notes in um, major scale. Well, actually eight. The eighth note is the same as the first note. Um, but uh, there's seven decrees what we're gonna have. And we're gonna start with the C major scale and we are not gonna play the major scale from the higher no higher frequency notes. We're gonna start from the lowest possible C and we are not also going to play it up. We're gonna play it down. That's why this is called the down the line in major, this pattern. And I'm going to show you also in different videos all the possibilities what you can do with this and how they, how you can find them from different kind of famous songs, for example. But the simple idea is that you play first C note and then you play the next note from the C major scale down. The up it will be D, will be the second degree actually, but this is a seven degree bass note but uh, you will understand soon how we actually use it when we build up chords. But we think it like this. This is one or eight. This is seven, the B note. Six is the A note. Five is the G note. Four is the F. Three is the E. And now we lack notes uh, the, because this is a standard tuning guitar the last possible note we can play with c major down is e so we cannot go to the d in another way than try to figure out where is the lowest possible d it will be the fourth string open or the fifth string fifth fret i like to take take it as a fifth string fifth fret because i can use more useful shape with that and then back to C. So like this C B A G F E D C. Okay. Patterns are circulating things which we can repeat. So we can kind of repeat that, but we need to do it in a nice rhythmical way that if we think this as so each bass note is one beat, we have eight beats in two bars, okay, because we have a four beats in one bar, okay, let's think it like that, one, two, three, four, that's one bar, one, two, three, four, that's two bars, okay, so if we're gonna do that kind of pattern that we have a C, B, A, G, F, E, D, C, C is the eighth note, so we need to start the repeating pattern again from C. So it will sound like this. C, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You see that the pattern ends to the C and starts from the C. But more natural way to end down the line, bass line in a major is that we instead of playing C as the last note, we will replace or substitute the C with G because G is the fifth degree of C and it will make natural sounding. It's called also the dominant um, note. When it is a chord, it's a dominant chord. So let's replace that eight note at with as to be as a G and let's listen what it sounds like. You see, you hear that it sounds more natural and more it works better that way. Okay? Once you got the idea of the down the line in major that it works like this and then we're gonna look 
Now, what kind of chords we can use, okay? Well, the first chord, of course, is a C major. Da. But when we go to the seventh degree, this is the seventh note of the major scale. Doesn't matter what major scale it is, but it's the seventh note, seventh degree. We extremely rarely use the seventh degree diminished chord. We want to use only major and minor chords in uh, patterns. So what happens? What, what kind of a major chord we can build for the B note? Well, it is the third inversion of the fifth chord. I just let it go like that, okay? So fifth chord is a G major chord. It's the fifth note of the C major scale, C, D, E, F, G. And we create the third inversion, which means that we have the ma major third of the G note, which is a B as a bass, and play a G, B at the bass. I play it like that, or you can play, you can play it like that. You can look the diagrams at the members area, there's a lot of them how to play these chords. But down the line in major, it is, I can say, it is always like this. You go play the root chord and then you play the third inversion of the fifth chord. In this case, C, G, B at the bass. And this bass, the seventh note of the major scale, is extremely important kind of like a passing tone, passing bass note, a passing chord, or leading chord, the, the, the relative ma minor, relative major and relative minor, depending on which key you are playing. If you're playing A minor, it will be the G, B at the bass to C. But okay, but let, let's look. When you have songs which go down the line, the next chord is the third inversion of the fifth chord. And then the A, that's gonna be the sixth note of the C major scale is the A. And the, if you know how to harmonize the major scale, you understand that the sixth chord is always the minor chord. So we have now three first chords of the down the line in major. And uh, these are without an ex <laughs> these are always the same, okay? Okay, in down the line, it happens. In okay, so you now know three chords of the for the down the line in major, and that kind of like it tells you that's the rule that you have a down the line. Da da. When you hear that, it's maybe it goes after that to, to somewhere else. And it usually goes di, da da da. It's not perfect down the line anymore, but these three notes will will tell you that it is a down the line in major. Di, da, da. Okay, theory here is that you have the root, then uh, the fifth chord and the sixth chord. But the bass line decrease are eight, seven, six. You can think it like that. If you think that the, the root, the duplicated root, the, is the eight or one, or one, seven, six. Okay? Get familiar with this movement. Then we go to the fourth chord, not the fourth degree, but the fourth chord if we count. <laughs> One, two, and three. And the next chord, uh, the next bass note is G, and it's very natural to have a G major chord there, okay? That we.
that one I has uh, down the line with the G major chord as the fourth chord. Okay, these three first chords are always the same, but the fourth chord can have a inversion chord also, which is the third inver. No, it's the fifth inversion of the first chord root chord, which means that the C major no chord has a root third and a fifth. So we can have the G at the base like this. Very common in uh, popular music. Like this. We have, what is the difference? And it's easy to finger, make the fingering. So you just lift your ring finger and put it to G. Like there. So the sound is different. Okay. This is the one with the fifth chord, and here, with the fifth inversion. That's with the fifth inversion of the first degree root chord, C major, G at the base. Then we go to the next chord, which is going to be the F bass, and it's very much always the fourth chord. It is the fourth chord, F. Fifth chord in the, if you count the bass, one, two, three, four, five, the fifth in order, but it's gonna be the fourth degree chord, F. And then the next chord, can be either the third degree E minor or third inversion of the C. Okay, and then we go to the D note, which usually is the second degree D minor, and then we land to C or more natural way to the G. Okay. Learn from the diagrams and try to listen what it sounds like. You can play many different ways this. Here will be E minor. there is that I take a bass and then chord notes with the index, middle and ring fingers, fourth, third and second string. First is the C and then G, B at the bass. And this can be also A minor seventh actually. If you don't want to use the A minor chord, you take the ring finger as the third string open, so A minor seven. Here's a G major, 6th string, 3rd fret, then 4th, 3rd and 2nd string open, and an F major, and an E minor, 6th string open, 4th string, 2nd fret, 3rd and 2nd strings open. And then, this is a D minor 7th, actually, yes. 4th string open, 3rd string, 2nd fret, 2nd and 1st strings, 1st frets. And again, G major, 6th string, 3rd fret, and 4th, 3rd and 2nd strings open. Sometimes if you hit the top notes, can even be, be wrong notes. If you, if you, for example here, forget to lift your finger, it doesn't sound that bad if the C is there. Even it is, uh, it is the eleventh note of the G major chord. G major. And you can do this kind of tap. The tap is there at the same time when you do the bass. This is 
actually pretty advanced technique. Do it nicely. You see, I'm playing a bass note with my thumb and uh, tapping the string same time, but they both ring. Well, the boats are at the same time. You hear this? I try to get this sound. And I also lift my finger sometimes a little bit up to make it more articulated. And this down the line can be slow, also like this. Okay, so it's more natural. Right? 